Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Karis Time, it's time for the Ash Olympics. Ash is the newest chromatic brawler coming to Brawl Stars. He's available at tier 30 of the Once Upon a Brawl Brawl Pass, which by the way, now it has rewards for every single tier. And I'll be giving you more details on how valuable the pass is later in this video as we talk about Ash. Ash is the garbage man for the new castle courtyard environment. He uses a garbage can for armor and cleaning tools as weapons. He's the first brawler of a new fantasy trio, which means that we can expect some more fantasy-like brawlers in a future update. Now, Ash has a logo on his back that actually belongs to the artist that creates the brawlers in Brawl Stars. Paul, the Brawl Stars developer, who happens to be Scottish and who is self-proclaimed on Twitter as Grumpy. And by the way, Ash is also Grumpy and Scottish. Time to take out the rubbish. Lavid. Numpty. Meet my pals. Stick around to the end of the video to see all his animated pins. But first, I wanted to give a big thank you to Mech Arena for sponsoring this video. Click below or scan the QR code to download it for free. Now this is actually a special sponsorship because Mech Arena actually sent me a box. I don't know what's in it yet. And I'm going to open it up after I tell you guys about the game. Now you can actually go to the timestamp on the screen right here to continue with the rest of my video. However, I would really appreciate you guys checking out the sponsorship since I could not create the content that you guys love without their support, so please stick around. Mech Arena is a mobile 5v5 shooter game that I have really enjoyed playing. The graphics are awesome and it runs incredibly smooth, but what I really love is how fast-paced and action-packed the gameplay is. And one of the coolest things about the game is how you can actually customize your mechs the way that you want to play. Lancer is small and nimble and he can jump to avoid enemy fire. Killshot has a dash that deals massive damage to enemies that he crashes into, and Panther has a shield that he can put down, plus he can hold very high damaging weapons. And that's actually a whole other level of customization that you can do in this game. You actually get to choose which weapons you equip to each mech based on how you want to play. And while we're talking about customization, each mech has a ton of different skins and you can fully customize their colors however you'd like. The skin customization paired with the combat customization was actually done really well in this game. Mech Arena just launched globally and they're running a huge event in-game right now, including daily welcome rewards during the first week which will give you a huge head start in the game. The game is completely free to play on both iOS and Android. Plus, if you use my personal link or the QR code on the screen, you'll get a black carbon skin, 300 A coins, and 50,000 credits to get started, which honestly, I kind of wish I had when I first started. Okay, now let's see what's inside the box. Okay, check, check this out. Oh, that is fancy. <laughs> oh, this is actually really cool. This is like their premium currency in game, the A coins. Okay, and we got some cool player cards and some stickers. Okay, and then we got this, which is actually the art of Mech Arena. This is really cool. They've got some concept art. I mean, that's really cool. Some more awesome stuff right there. They got some artwork of all the mechs in the game, which is really awesome. Then they got a bunch of different locations within the various game modes within Mech Arena, which is actually a really fun part of it is the different modes and the different maps and how it affects gameplay. Dude, they've got a, a cool poster right here. Plus on the back side, it's like a target practice. I. I'm just now learning that depending on where you aim, you deal more damage. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but it's it's looking pretty cool. It opens up like the... Okay. Oh! Mech Arena is a new third-person mech shooter. Dude! Wanna get up close and personal? Take a kill shot, equip shotguns, and use its dash ability to fight face-to-face. -face. This, <laughs> this is the next level of birthday cards, right? Okay, this is the last thing here. Check it out. That's actually a pretty legit shirt right there. Boom, with that mech there. Fits pretty nicely if I do say so myself. I wanted to give a big thank you to everybody that watched through this sponsorship to support my channel. I know this was longer than normal and the fact that you guys watched the whole thing to support me really means a lot because sponsorships like this are what make it possible for me to make the content that you guys love. And as a special thank you, this is my player ID in Mech Arena. And if you are fast enough to download it and send me a friend request, I'll accept it and maybe we might just be able to play some matches together. So download Mech Arena using the link in the description below or scan the QR code on the screen. And thanks again to Mech Arena for sponsoring this video and also for the sweet swag. Ash's special trait, Rage. Ash has a Rage Bar below his ammo bar that is divided into three parts. His Rage Bar fills up whenever he deals damage to enemies with either his attack or his super. It also fills up if Ash takes damage from enemy brawlers. One thing to note is that it does not fill up if he takes damage from non-brawler enemies like the Ike or the boss in Siege. Once the first of the three bars is full, he enters into level one Rage, which increases his main attack damage by 50%. It does not increase the damage from his super. He also 
gets a bit of a speed boost. When the second bar is full, he enters into level two rage, which increases his main attack damage by another 50%, and he also gets another speed boost. Now, Ash's rage bar starts to slowly deplete once he stops dealing or receiving damage. There's no benefit to filling Ash's rage all the way up, other than the fact that he'll be at level two rage for longer. If you see an enemy Ash, you'll see the castle icon next to him, so you'll know how much rage he currently has. Ash's main attack, clean up. Ash slams his broom onto the ground so hard that it shoots tremors that deal damage to all targets that are hit by it. If you don't get out of the way, you just might bite the dust. Not only does Ash deal damage to multiple targets, but he also charges his rage for every brawler he hits, which means that he's especially strong against enemies that clump up together. Now there's a little delay between Ash's attack animation and when his shot actually fires, so keep that in mind. He can still move around during this delay, so it's more like the delay with BB's attack than it is like Frank's attack. Ash's super, little helpers. For a super, Ash throws down five cleaning robot rats that track down the nearest enemy and explode on contact. It's similar to Tick Super, except there's five of them. They also obviously don't deal as much damage as Tick Super does, but they can still deal a fair amount of damage if all the rats hit the same target. What really makes this super useful though is that they each charge Ash's rage by a significant amount. In fact, if all five of them hit an enemy, Ash will enter into level two rage. The best way to use the super is to surround an enemy with all of the rats so at least a few of them are guaranteed to hit, even if an enemy tries to attack them with ammo. Unless, of course, you're facing Jackie, in which case they will just all die. Ash's gadget, Chill Pill. When Ash activates his Chill Pill gadget, he uses all of the rage that he has built up and calms down and uses it to heal himself. His rage bar immediately becomes empty, and depending on how much rage he uses, he will recover as little as 250 health or all the way up to 2,500 health if his rage is filled all the way. Ash's first star power is First Bash. With this star power equipped, if Ash's ammo bar is completely full, his next attack will double the amount of rage that he gets from dealing damage. This boost is for every brawler that he hits, which means that he can potentially fill up his rage bar completely from just one attack, depending on how many enemies he hits with it. Ash's second star power is mad as heck. This star power increases Ash's reload speed depending on how much rage he currently has. If his rage bar is completely full, his reload speed will increase by 30%, which is a very significant buff. Now that we have a good understanding of Ash's mechanics, we're going to put him through a bunch of tests to see how he compares to every brawler in the game. As always, we'll start with his worst test, move our way up to the best test, where he really thrives. Then we'll talk about how strong I think he's going to be in every mode. The Supercharge Test. Ash requires five hits with his main attack to charge his super. Even though he has a somewhat fast reload speed, he takes 5.9 seconds to fully charge his super because he has to reload two ammo to do it. If he already has his super charged up, he can recharge it in 2.4 seconds, which makes a big difference. Even then, Ash comes in 49th place and the only brawler that he beats is Jesse, which actually suggests that Ash is not going to have his super up very often. The attack range test. Ash's main attack has a range of five tiles long, which ties him with Bull exactly at 46th place out of all of the brawlers. This means that you can consider Ash a close range brawler, so it's going to be best to avoid open maps to keep that rage bar as full as you can, so you can deal heavy damage when Ash does not get close enough to deal damage. The Area Test. Ash's main attack is able to clear 10 skulls on the ground. Ash's super rats won't actually break any skulls when they first land, but with an enemy brawler in the right spot, Ash is able to break 18 tiles using his super. This ends up tying him with Leon for 41st place, which suggests that Ash is not very good at controlling a large area on the map. The Super Range Test. Now, including his throw range and the radius that his rats spawn, Ash's super is able to reach seven tiles away, which ends up placing him in 40th place. Although, technically, they can move around and they have infinite range, but unfortunately for him, that doesn't work in this test. The box test. Ash doesn't do very well in this test since he relies a lot on his rage bar to deal damage, and hitting boxes doesn't fill it up at all. Even though he isn't able to increase his damage with his rage bar, he builds up some good damage with the power cubes that he picks up, and he's able to attack multiple boxes at a time once he actually reaches the center. It takes him 54.4 seconds to open all 16 boxes, which places him in 35th place out of the 50 brawlers in the game, which suggests that he's not going to be able to ramp up very quickly unless he's somehow able to charge his rage at the start of a match. The level 25 Siege Bot Test. Ash is only able to slow the boss down for a couple of seconds with his super and then tank a couple extra hits with his gadget. Even though he had a slight advantage, he still clearly does not do well against the Siege Bot by himself. He leaves the Ike's turret with 5,300 health and comes in 34th place, and he actually would probably normally do a bit worse. This test was particularly difficult to record perfectly because I wanted Ash to have as much rage as possible, which means taking damage from an enemy brawler, which means I'd have less HP to tank against the boss 
boss, or using ammo on an enemy brawler, which means I would have less ammo to deal to the boss. When I finally did get a solid run with Ash, I realized that the siege bot was only level 24, and I decided to show it anyway because this was a good showcase of how to defend a boss in siege with Ash while retaining some rage. The Assassin Test now, Ash immediately activates his super and fires one of his main attacks just before his robot rats all hit the boss. His next two main attacks deal double the damage since he instantly jumps to level 2 rage. His second super doesn't quite hit the boss in time, so he ends up dealing a total of 8,540 damage in those three seconds and ends up placing 32nd place. This suggests that Ash can't really deal a ton of damage quickly, but he does have a lot of HP, so he still might actually be pretty good in close encounters. The Boss Test Ash starts off very slow since he has no rage and it takes him a while to charge it up. Once he does get his super, his robot rats deal a good amount of extra damage and almost charge up his super again completely. That's also when his rage bar reaches full, which makes him reload a lot faster thanks to his mad as heck star power equipped. Ash gets 31st place, defeating the boss in 1 minute and 4 seconds. Even with his rage up the whole time, this suggests that Ash actually will only be average at dealing damage over a period of an entire match. The Dive Test now, in this test, I let Ash charge his rage bar up before diving to see how much damage he can deal in the best circumstance. Ash is able to get close enough to the Ike turret to start attacking, all thanks to the help of his robot rats that tank for him. Before his rage runs out, he uses the remaining rage to heal himself with his gadget to tank one extra shot from the Ike turret, and he ends up dealing 7,140 damage to it and comes in 26th place, which is right about in the middle of all the brawlers. The Swarm Test Ash throws his super away from the bots so that after he hits the first row of bots with his main attack, his rats fill up his rage bar and finish the bots off by the time that he has moved on to the next row of bots. From here, he one-shots each row of bots after the first, so Ash defeats the swarm in 6.1 seconds, which is faster than over half of the brawlers. He ends up taking 23rd for the swarm test. The race test. Now, without his rage charged at all, Ash has a normal movement speed like Nita or Barley or most of the brawlers do. With one rage charged, he has the movement speed similar to most of the tanks like Bull or El Primo. And when he has two rage charged, he is as fast as the fastest brawlers in the game like Max or Crow or Mortis. Now, I gave Ash the biggest advantage possible by letting him start with his rage charged all the way up. He doesn't have anything else to help him move through the course faster, but he has at least some speed boost from his rage for the whole race, which allows him to finish in 10.7 seconds, which actually places him in 21st place. This suggests that even though he has a bit of an attack delay, he'll still have the speed to try and catch up and get close to enemy brawlers as long as he's raged up. The Super Damage Test each of Ash's robots deal 420 damage to each target inside their blast radius when they explode. With 5 rats, Ash can deal 2,100 damage, which ties Ash with Byron in 21st place. Now keep in mind that these rats chase the nearest target to them and they have low HP, so even though they deal 2,100 damage, it is very likely that they won't deal maximum damage very often. The 3 attack kill test. Now with zero rage, Ash's attack does 1,120 damage. With one rage, he deals 1,680 damage. And with two rage, he's able to deal 2,240 damage with every single attack. Because of Ash's first bash star power, Ash is able to get to level one rage after his first two attacks. So he deals 3,920 damage starting with no rage when using three attacks. This is enough for him to three shot kill 17 of the brawlers in the game, including Colt, Rico, Dynamite, and four other brawlers. At level two rage, Ash deals 6,700 720 damage with 3 ammo, which is enough for him to take out 44 of the 50 brawlers in the game, including 8-Bit and Pam. This ends up placing him in 20th place for the 3-attack kill test. The Reload Test now, normally, Ash can unload and reload 10 ammo in 20 seconds, which is actually pretty fast, but his reload speed gets much faster with his mad as heck star power. If he has this star power equipped and his rage bar remains full, he's able to unload and reload 10 shots in only 16.9 seconds. So he ends up taking 14th out of the 50 brawlers in the game in the reload speed test. And now it's time for Ash's best test. Then we'll talk about how strong I think he's going to be in all of the game modes. Then we'll talk about the brawl pass and show you all of Ash's pins. The survival test. Now, Ash already has a lot of health to begin with, but he also uses his super on the sniper bot to fill his rage bar up and recover a lot of his health with his chill pill gadget. Unfortunately, the sniper bot cannot die in this challenge, so even though Ash is able to use his gadget two more times, it only heals him a little bit since his rage bar isn't filled up very much. He's able to survive for 33.6 seconds, which puts him in 12th place. Unfortunately for Ash, he only places 12th in his best event. Does that mean he's actually going to be bad though? Let's actually talk about how strong I think he's going to be.
to be in each of the game modes. I think Ash is going to be in the B tier in gem grab because I can see him being pretty powerful, but only on the right maps. I don't think he's going to be able to win really open maps or open lanes all by himself. But if he does have a good wall to be hide behind, he is really great for pushing the enemy back and causing problems for the enemy spawn. For Brawl Ball, I think he's going to be in the B tier as well. Maybe actually a little bit closer to the A tier. He has a good reload speed that can be increased with his second star power, which is actually really great for Brawl Ball so that you can fire shots while still also being able to shoot the ball when you need to. His high amount of health and his speed increase when raged. And then his super, which kind of acts like a, a moving wall. All of those are really great tools in allowing him to be able to push the enemy back so you can actually score a goal. In Heist, I'm going to put him in the B tier as well. Ash can deal a lot of damage when he's at level two rage, especially with his second star power equipped. It also helps that his main attack can actually go through enemies and also hit the safe. So that if you're dealing damage to the safe and enemies, you'll actually keep his rage up. The only problem is, is that if Ash ever finds himself at the safe without a rage, he's not gonna be able to do very much. So I can see him being a little inconsistent and somewhat easy to play around. For Siege, I think Ash barely makes it into the A tier. His biggest problem as a brawler in general is his range, but Siege is a game mode that really forces players to be pretty close to each other throughout the match, and he also has really good survivability, which is good for winning that first Siege bot. His health and his super make him an okay brawler for diving when you need that emergency damage in that last second, right? There are better options in the S tier, but he has pretty much everything that a good Siege brawler needs. I'm gonna put Ash in the F tier for Bounty. Bounty is always going to be a game mode that requires distance, range, and patience, except for like maybe one map, right? Those are three things that Ash has very little of. I can't think of any situation where Ash would be able to consistently get kills without putting himself at huge risk of being killed himself, which staying alive is more important than getting kills and bounties, so he just struggles. He has no shields or any way that he can heal himself except for his gadget, which is then going to cost him his damage boost and his speed boost. I actually think that Ash is going to be in a C tier for knockout. Just like bounty, players generally like to keep their space between each other in this game mode, but with a good map with lots of grass for him to hide in or a nice wall for him to get cover, I could actually see Ash being able to quickly take out some of the weaker brawlers, and unlike Bounty, one kill is really all it takes for you to get a really solid advantage and win the round. For Hot Zone, I think Ash will also be in the C tier. I could see him being very good at getting into a zone and taking out as many brawlers as he needs if he makes it inside, but other than that, he simply does not have the range to defend a zone or like approach zones on open maps without taking tons of damage before getting there. For Solo Showdown, it's actually a really close call between F tier and C tier. I'm leaning a little bit more toward the C tier. Ash relies a lot on his rage bar to deal damage, and even if it does fill up from a quick kill near the start, it's probably not going to stay full. He also benefits from hitting multiple targets with his main attack, which doesn't happen too often in solo showdown, but if he does survive long enough for the smoke to bring brawlers close together, he has a decent chance of winning. But against good players, I don't think that will happen very often. I'm gonna put Ash in the C tier for duo showdown. The only difference between solo and duo showdown is that Ash is more likely to hit multiple targets in this game mode, which can actually make a pretty big difference. Teams usually end up closer together in this game mode as well, since both brawlers on a team have to be defeated in order for them to be knocked out. So close range combat is more likely, which is where Ash actually shines. I mentioned earlier in the video that the Brawl Pass now has a reward at every tier. I've compared this Brawl Pass to the previous Brawl Pass and found that the new Brawl Pass does provide more value, just not by as much as you might think. They mostly spread the rewards around so that you get a reward at each tier, but the total value is actually pretty similar. The only difference is that you'll actually get two additional pins in this pass when compared to the previous Brawl Pass, and you'll get an additional 150 total gold. The number of boxes and power points are the same as in the past season. Now, I also told you that I would show you all of Ash's animated pins, so I'm going to let them play while I end this video. Thank you very much for watching this video. In my opinion, Ash actually looks like a well-balanced kind of close range brawler that might take a little time to get used to. And I'm really curious to know what you guys think about Ash after seeing some of his gameplay. Do you think his rage mechanic is going to justify him being good despite him actually not doing great in the Olympic tests? Make sure you guys subscribe for more Brawl Stars content. Click the link below for the sponsor of today's video. And for now, this is Kairos time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.